What's up guys? I want to show you how I do forms in React using no libraries, just React. We're not going to use Redux form, Redux, any of that stuff. Just using local state and directly in React. Uh, I've used Redux form a lot in other things and I like this method better for a lot of forms because you don't really need some of the extra stuff some of the libraries give you. So I have right here a React application up that I'm going to show you demonstrate on. And this is just using create React app and I'm just going to create a new component. As you can see, uh, if you don't know what create React app is, I recommend Googling it, create starter kit. Um, I just have the initial kit open and I'm going to show you how I will create a form component. So form.js, and I'm just going to import in uh, form from form.js. And we're going to add it to our project here and display it. And then we're going to put our logic in form. All right, so I'm going to import React from React. And here we're going to make a class. Now, you can't really do a peer functions if you want to create a form in React because you want to use the state. So we're going to extends react.component and we're going to have a state here. Now, I'm just going to do a simple registration form maybe where it's asking for first name, last name, and username, email, and password. Okay, so state here is gonna hold all the values. Um, so as people are typing in the form, what we wanna do is we wanna update the state here, and then we wanna have the values that are here reflected in our form. So in our render function, I'm gonna do return here, I'm going to create a form, and we're going to create some input fields. Now, this is not specific to just input fields. You could be using a UI framework like Bootstrap, Material UI, um, and Semantic UI. There's tons of them. You, This works just like that for any styled input. So here, what you can do is you can say value is equal to this.state.value or this.state.value and value being whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to say this is first name. So I'll say placeholder just so we know what it, the value is. We'll say first name. And we have the value here. So whatever value is here is going to be reflected here. So if I come over here. Let's see, oh, I just need to restart my server. Let that run. So whatever value I have in the state is gonna be reflected here. And we can see that as when this loads, I'm gonna try typing in the form and it's not gonna let me because it's gonna have what I have here. So if I have dog, dog is gonna show up and I need to upper, uppercase this, there we go. For my import because this is uppercase form. Oops. Um, expected a string. Oh, we need to export default. That's very important too. So our component can actually render. Okay, so you see the word dog here. And I'm trying to type. I don't know if you can hear me typing, but I'm trying to type and it doesn't let me. And that's because, well, we said the value is equal to whatever's here, right? And the value here is dog, so it won't let me change it. But if we wanted to change it, what we would need to do is create an onChange function. And an onChange function passes a um, variable called event back or parameter that you can use. And e.target.value is going to be whatever the user just typed, what the current value is. So what you can do is you can say this, let's move over. Let's actually drop down a few lines so this is easier to see. So on change, this dot set state, so this will update the state, and we could say 
first name is equal to e.target.value. Right? So now, as I'm typing in this, I can say dog and type whatever I want. And if I were to go to inspect this element, now I have the React Dev tools, which allows me to look at the component. I can see the value, I can see the state um, updating. So, and that'll help us when we submit the form. Okay, so this is one way to do on change. So I could copy and paste this, right, three more times. And I could change this to last name. And we have to put last name here, last name here. And what is this? User, this one is username. 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 And password. Sorry, actually this is the email. Right, you can fill out all the fields this way. But I'm gonna show you a better way to do on change than just you know typing all this is this is a lot of duplicate code right I mean it's not a ton this dot set state you know but what if you want to add maybe some middleware um, or just something that runs every time that this value is updated it's nice to have a function that basically abstracts this so just to show you guys this is working we can come over here type stuff and everything types okay which is expected, right? But how do we actually submit this form and see the values? Well, before we do that, I wanna show you another way. So on change works just fine like this, but we can create our own change function. I'm just gonna call it change, which accepts E and does something kind of cool. So what we can do is instead of specifying here, what we can say is give this a name value name being first name and notice how the name here I want it to match up with the name in our state what this will allow us to do is here I can say this dot set state and I can say e dot target dot name is equal to e dot target dot value so what we're gonna do is now instead of having this here, we're going to say e this dot change pass e in. So now notice um, it's going to grab what the name value is here and put it here. So when we pass e in to change, it's going to call this function here, and it's going to grab, like I said, the name value, put it here. So it's going to say first name is now equal to the new value. So now we can just go down this right and just simplify it. So now I have last name, and I, I forgot to change the place. There's just two placeholders, okay. And we can get rid of you, and now e dot this dot change, and it does the exact same thing, right? We could keep the other change. Like there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. It's just a little bit less code, a little less duplication, right? If you wanted to change stuff. So username, copy this, come down here, do it for this, do it for this, name is equal to email, and then name password. And then we also want to do type is equal to password on this field just so it's hidden. Okay, so how do I submit our form, right? And actually get values, use it, do something with it maybe call an API or whatnot. Well, what we can do is we can create a button here. We can call it um, on, I think on click, not on submit. So on click what we can do, is we can call a this dot on submit. And now on submit is a function we're gonna create here. And we can just add it to our class. So submit button. So here we can add our submit. So I can say on submit 
and we're just going to console.log this.state. So we can see the values. What this will allow us to do is see the values of when we submit everything. And we could possibly handle it. Now I also just want to put some line breaks here so our form is just separated a little bit on new lines. All right. So A, B, C, D, E. Now if I submit this, I don't know if you guys caught that for a second, but what actually happened is it printed to the console, refreshed, and you'll notice how the URL now looks like this, and it passed all the values that were here, up here. Now, that's just like the default behavior for when you have a form using this form thing, using the form tag. If you don't want that to happen, what you can do is pass the event parameter. So on click here, we can pass in the event handler. And then we can say e.preventDefault. And now the page won't auto refresh and put all these all this junk in our URL. Right? So if I put A, B, C, D, E, F, um, you'll notice we just print the object out, we have all the values. And now what that allow us to do is we can actually, you know, from this we have this.state, we have these values. We can do whatever we want with it. Maybe uh, our form, maybe our app up here wants to use these values. So what we can do is we can say this.props.onSubmit. Now the onSubmit here is going to be different than here because we're calling props. Props we're going to actually pass here. So the onSubmit, we can create a function that takes maybe some fields and we're going to do something with it. So on submit and fields and then here we can actually say this dot on submit fields. Now you can see we have tons of on submits. This dot on submit refers to this. So we can say console.log app component got and then you can pass in the fields that you guys got. Now coming over here, we can just pass in this.state. So now if we rerun this, we can put A, B, C, D, E. We can submit it. And look, our app got those values, so it can do stuff with it. So let's see what some th different things we can do. And also, before we do stuff in app, what if we want to clear after submitting? You can do this.setState and then set all the values to be empty, like this. So now, when you submit, it'll actually clear. A, B, C, D, E, F, run, and you can see that. Now what we can do is we can get fancy and we can say um, state of our application. So we're getting, we're in the, this has our form here. We can say fields is equal to an empty object, right? But then we can say this.setState fields, and we can actually do stuff with it. Now we can render it. We can say, we can just show what the fields we get here. So json.stringify, because this is an object, and if you put null comma two, it'll actually format it nicely. We can put that in a paragraph tag. So now we can see what you submitted on the screen. Fields. Oh, this needs to be this.state.fields. So it'll be an empty object at first, then when we submit, it'll populate. So A, B, C, D, E, and I submit, and bam, look at all the values populate there. Now, we can even take this to the next level, and we can actually do this 
kind of real time, as we're typing in the form, we can get stuff to populate. So instead of you know having an on submit, maybe we have an oops an, an on change. And then we call this on change and we call this on change. So every time there's a change in our form, we want to update our fields and show it here. So in our form here, we can actually get rid of our on submit for our props. But in our change here, we're gonna say this dot props dot on change. And then we can actually pass in e dot target dot name. Just like we're doing for our state here, we can pass in the new value. Dot value. So not only are we gonna pass it to our state, but also to our app up here. So now it's gonna get the values, right? But notice how we're not getting fields anymore. We're actually just getting one value. So updated value. So we can just pass in updated value here. And it'll go ahead and update our fields, I think. So A, B, okay, it didn't work. Let's see what we did wrong. So we have on change here. Uh, this dot props on change should be called. Um, and then set state updated value. So it, it actually needs to be fields, right? Because we need to add this to the fields value. So we need to unpack this. Oops, two. So we have, need to set the state of fields because we're updating fields. We're adding the new value. We also want to keep the original values that are in fields already. So we're going to say this.state.fields. So just to recap what that this thing is doing, is we're going to set the state. We're going to keep the values that are originally in fields. We're going to grab that new updated value and put it in our field. All right. So now as I'm typing, um, Bob Martin BM BM at BM.com. And then our, my password. So as we're typing, we can actually see it update live in our app right here. So that's pretty cool. And then if you want to click submit, it all clears. And you'll notice it doesn't update here. And that's just because in our on submit, we don't call on change. So if we wanted to, we could say this dot, see how we're calling, oops, this dot set state. We could also say this dot props dot on change. And now when they're submitting, it will clear everything. Bam. And now everything is clear. We can type more stuff, clear more stuff, and do the whole nine yards. So that is it for this video, guys. That's how I'm in liking doing forms. It's a pretty lightweight. The basic crux of it is we have a change function here that lets us set the value of our state, and we're just setting, keeping the state here, passing the value in, and having an on change for our input. And then we just handle the submission with an on click here with our button. We can handle stuff in our on submit and do whatever we want when the form submits. Redirect page, give it to another component, all kinds of stuff we can do. So I'm really liking this method of doing forms instead of doing using libraries just because it's lightweight and you don't need, this like works very well, you don't need some of the other stuff. So that's what I've been doing lately. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know if you have any questions or any troubles setting this up. I'd be happy to help and I'll see you guys in the next video.